Hello buddies, this is Hugo. In this video, we're gonna talk about something special. Because I got in hand is a mobile CPU, i7-5950HQ. And in the fellow section, we're gonna have a review about how could a mobile CPU working on the PC mainboard. Let's see the mainboard I got is for MSI Z97 Gaming 3. And the cooler I use is for Thermotech, which I purchased for probably around 8 years, as well as the Antec 850 watt power supply. I use for around 5 years since I was an undergraduate student. All of those are out of the hardware, and we're gonna have several benchmark testing to evaluate its performance. Just take an i7 4790K 3D model as an example. It is a classic desktop CPU in LGA 1150 standard. Distinguished from such conventional desktop CPU, metric reform means a unique packaging technology that let an Intel mobile CPU could perfectly working on PC mainboard. This conversion is not only designed a dedicated cover, but magically convert the original BGA packaging into LGA1150 standard as well. More specifically, the 4th and 5th generation HQ series of mobile CPU initially has 1364 protruding pins, while the desktop CPU only has 1150 pads on the button side of processor. As a brilliant solution, adding one more piece of PCB to convert such difference physically. Exactly, the mobile CPU should be redefined each and every pin and well packaging them as a complete desktop CPU. Loosen the screws of the socket is depends. At least the motherboard I use is not required. On the first run, we launch the BIOS in default setting to show that its basic performance. With any doubt, we proceed to desktop and check the CPU-Z is well being identified as original specification. Meanwhile, we run a quick testing where freeze benchmark for the result we may assume its performance is slightly better than i 7 k Alright, I fully understand your expect there is one more thing, the overclock performance. Now we turn back to BIOS to elaborate several essential settings. First of all, the CPU ratio. Conservatively, I set it as 42, but it really could stably reach up to 44. Meanwhile, the RAM ratio I just leave as auto. Stepping the RAM, initially I turn on the SMP, but if you wish to boost the CPU even higher, please switch off this function. Last but not least, the input voltage could be even lower to 1.85 and correspondingly, the crawl voltage could be set as 1.35. Double check the fellow features, then I will boost the system. It's always have to point out the settings as demonstration is only for reference. You could do it even better. Congress, we are in. As a routinary tax, check in again the CPU-Z info. There is always be the moment you will see the frequency boost to 4200 MHz. Now the most exciting section is to evaluate how much improvement has the outcome of OC from 3.8 to 4.2 GHz. Frankly speaking, such waiting is quite anxious, but I firmly believe it could run a significant leading comparing with i7 4770NK or 4790NK. Awesome, the result is confirmed and double check. Well, the result is slightly lower than the first time. Anyway, let's choose the standard i7 4790K as a reference. Wonderful. 14% of leading and switch to 6700K is 10% in advance. Finally, the 7700K is very close in performance. The next section I will forward to freeze benchmark, just like stripe wild iron is hot. Based on my experience, the freeze chest has high risk of collapse comparing with previous CPU Z bench. So if this time the CPU could survive from the test, it would let us much more confident to proceed to final stress testing. 
As seen for the first time, in default frequency, it could be the fourth generation Haswell i7. Actually, it is originally a Broadwell processor with advanced lithography as 14 nanometers, while the i7 4790K is in 22 nanometers. Thus, theoretically, i7 5950HQ may perform better as lower power consumption, less heat generation, and that will save you a lot in cooling system as well as the power supply. Nevertheless, it only costs three-fourths of desktop i7 processor, and I suppose it is the most crucial factor for you to watch this video. Well, let's look back the result. Perfect, the relative speed reached up to 33, and I made a chart for comparison. After overclock, it has over 9% improvement. That's really a significant progress, which is exactly which up to Skylake i7-6700K level. Typically, one more testing on Cinebench. Considering this section really takes a long time, that I have to speed up this episode. Actually, I've done once before, but just do it again. Well, the score is 884, slightly lower than the previous settings. But it still has over 7% leading comparing with 4770K. Forgive me, but there is one last thing. Let's have a look about how it performs at 4.3 GHz. Just leave the other settings alone and reboot. Once again, the CPU Z Bench. And last time at 4.2 GHz, the 5950HQ is very close to 7700K, but this time I really want to see something different. Let's take a reference. Boom! 2% leading. Alright, in some degree, its cost performance to me is very impressive. Here I collect several typical desktop i7 processors for reference. As final section, the stress view testing is a must. Meanwhile, I think you may ask me how it performs in 3D games, but I'm afraid I've already out of computer games for years. Currently, my demand is mostly concentrated on computer aid design, photos and videos editing, so the gaming evaluation is on your turn. What's more, considering this processor is unlocked, you will have much more flexibility to play around. Therefore, it is well worth for you to customize and squeeze every last drop of this potential performance, save for standing up on 4.4 GHz.